Okay, well, I guess we can get started now. Um, this stream is focused on running a couple of games with DOSBox, or more specifically DOSBox X on OpenBSD. Background being that um, we have a DOSBox port, but that one's about five years old. Um, and uh, it's slow, it's buggy, it doesn't do as much. And um, well, as far as I know, some work has happened um, in the DOSBox project. And, like there has been no release since then, so um, and there's a couple of other uh, DOSBox forks that have been doing work and publishing releases um, with different focus. For example, DOSBox uh, Daum, D A U M, I think, added some like light wrapper or something. Um, there's J DOSBox, which I think works with uh, Java or JavaScript, if I recall correctly. Anyhow, I looked a while ago. I looked through all of those, and the most interesting one that I could find um, uh, for for our OpenBSD purposes was uh, DOSBox X. So uh, let's move this to the side for now. And uh, where is it? Where are you? Uh, here, DOSBox X. So what's interesting about DOSBox X is that on the one hand, like pragmatically, they have um, they do releases regularly. You see 91 releases here, and most recent one here from 2018, uh, September 2018. So this is good. Um, in addition, um, there's a couple of other advantages for using that in OpenBSD. On one hand, um, its goal is like to do an accurate emulation, which is um, uh, uh, desirable. Um, Overall, less, like, speaking of a reasonable goal of sorts, um, on the other hand, um, it has some included graphics acceleration and voodoo emulation, um, and it also uh, emulates uh, or well, strives to emulate the environment correctly for running Windows. Uh, 9x, like basically the, all of Windows prior to XP, um, uh, from the like end user uh, side, um, you can try that with the DOSBox stats and ports. But that is really, I think you can install it, but it's really buggy to run Windows 95 or 98. Uh, this one here works much better with it, so we'll get to that in a moment. But um, uh, first, uh, things first, so we'll be discussing some DOS games. So I have a bunch here. Um, I actually like made a little tag here that uh, helps me just find all the DOS box or DOS games that should run in, in, in DOS. Um, here we have our GOG mix uh, that does actually not have uh, DOS games. Why did I pull that up? Um, <laughs> the reason why it does not is that there's a whole bunch of GOG mixes that um, do uh, that for for DOSBox. Um, let's take for example XCOM. Uh, this one should have several categories of DOSBox. In here, list of GOG games using DOSBox. You can consult that. Uh, there might be others, but that's a good starting point, and I didn't want to, like, it's a ton, because, um, like, there's just so many old games that they have running with, with those, but so, no, Chrome is failing me here. Um, so, didn't want to, like, take too much focus from other uh, software um, away from the GOG mix. And also there's an issue, like a usability issue with the GOG mix now, so we're likely going to face that out. And in that regard, I would just like to announce that we have this uh, URL now and we'll probably be migrating some of the uh, documentation on running games on OpenBSD, including DOSBox games, to 
www.playonbsd.com. Okay, well, um, I'm gonna now run some games and I wanted to start with GTA. So, um, GTA, uh, the, the reason for that is that I just tested this one just before, so this is gonna be a low risk first one to look at. Um, it, it has a DOS and a Windows executable, I think, but we'll be focusing on the DOS executable here. Um, there is a 3DFX mode, but I didn't get that one to work. Uh, it's kind of hit or miss with 3DFX um, support in DOSBox at this point, and from what I've seen, um, like even if you get get it to run uh, some parts that se seem to be uh, 2D and not rendered by the Voodoo backend or 3DFX backend, um, are not going to be displayed correctly. So I have this folder here um, and uh, with uh, GTA files. Let's uh, quickly uh, stray aside. So here, the question is how do you get GTA? Um, GTA 1 has actually been um, released as freeware a while ago. Um, and I think Rockstar Games had it on their webpage for download at some point. However, it disappeared from there. Um, GTA 1 uh, we're talking about now, um, and um, there may be other sources where you can download it, but you gotta be like careful where you're gonna down download it from. I'm not sure if CNET might be a possibility. You might be able to download it from CNET, but I, I don't want to endorse it. Do your research before you download stuff from um, from sources, uh, especially since the official source has been taken, removed. Uh, likely because they used it for marketing prior to the release of GTA V that, to like get people riled up and nostalgic and then eager to try the new GTA. So anyhow, if you want to do it, you can get it for free. But uh, because it's freeware, but um, you may want to uh, do your research where to best get it from. There are some abandonware sites that are more reputable than others that may have it. Uh, so the next thing after getting the, the files, so here are the files. Um, next thing is you need a, a configuration file. Um, I do have a, I have started a little repository of configuration files. Uh, here, where you can find them labeled by game and um, the X standing for DOSBox X and then the version afterwards. Um, but um, in principle, the best approach is to, uh, let's go back one here, um, that you locate the sample configuration file. So this one should be in user local share those box x okay that's the reference one so let's copy that one over here and uh, we'll name it something differently uh, no. GTA one dot conf. Okay, and then we'll take a look. Um, this is just so that we like make use of some low low hanging fruit here um, to gain like playable performance. There's a ton of settings here in DOSBox X, much more than in original DOSBox. So what I usually do, not sure about how much impact this has, but output I usually set to OpenGL. And uh, what else? Here um, you have uh, video memory size. Uh, two megabyte should be plenty. We can change it to eight at this point. And then there's mem size. 
starts at 16. The official DOSBox um, documentation, I think, somewhere says um, it's best to have less than 64, so I typically set it to 32 megabytes. Um, but I've, especially for Windows 98 games, I've set it to something higher, like 128, without noticing any um, problems associated with that. Uh, okay, let me think. Here, um, CPU type, you can leave it at auto. I'm not sure what it usually picks. You can also do Pentium X, which seems to work fine, and I would leave cycles at auto, at first at least. Sometimes that causes problems. If the number of cycles is too fast or too slow that you can trip up some of the programs, but overall cycles auto, if there's no such issues, it's probably best to leave it at that because the performance is just smoother. Um, and you don't, you, it's more flexible than just setting cycles to max. Voodoo, you can leave like this. Uh, as I said, there are some issues still with it, and uh, the main the rest is here is an auto exec um, where you can actually basically start the game automatically if you use this configuration plan, which we're not going to do in this case. Um, okay, so we'll leave it like this, and now let's. Uh, oh! One more word of caution: DOSBox X is not yet in um, uh, in the ports. We're working out some things about the licenses, uh, but you can get the you can make use of the work in progress draft here by going to this web page. Um, there will be uh, an export to YouTube later, and I'll try to post all the relevant links there, um, so you can check out. Uh, this here into your ports tree um, and then build it yourself at this point until we actually have a, a port in OpenBSD. So um, let's see if anything happened here. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's see what happens with GT. Um, so this is the, how you call the, the configuration file. Um, you see here set blaster this um, gives you the values for the emulated sound blaster. Um, it's a sound blaster 16 I think and um, one of the things we may not get to it on this stream but one of the things is that um, you'll need to manually configure uh, sound cards for most of the DOS software. Um, and here's a trick for video. Um, the window is quite small right now, but here you can set force scalar, which works in some but not all situations, but this way you get a nice and large window. You see we're in drive Z or Z right now. Um, we need to mount uh, uh, like the C drive first. Um, the way I do this in this case is I know that GTA is and the, the files are in the subfolder and I just do this mount C and then so C is the drive in DOSBox, DOSBox X. Um, the second argument is um, in the file system of the operating system. So that means in this case home uh, games DOSBox. So um, and now we just go there with C colon and then CGTA and here don't do ls ls is not gonna get you anywhere you can do dear p if you want to uh, have it paginated um, you see here are the executables read me um, and the way to start it is just GTA DOS in this case here you can configure sound card and controls which I've already done, so let's just skip ahead and just run it. Um, 3DFX doesn't really work. Low color seems to run a little smoother, but overall the performance is okay with high color GTA, so let's just choose this. Um, yeah, the window, like the 
upscaling or the force scaling, as I said, it doesn't always work. So this video and in the GTA gameplay, um, it doesn't cooperate. The menu, though, uh, does. So it'll take a moment. Now you can hear the sound. The sound should be um, softer. Um, in this game, um, there's music played from CD in the original. Um, I'm not sure if you can set up uh, an ISO to with uh, the music and just have it run off of that. That might be worth a try if you have the original. Um, I'm not sure what's the best way if you don't have the CD to actually have the, the soundtrack, which is actually quite good running and um, like like skipping ahead when you enter a new car, which is part of the GTA experience. But yeah, um, should we take? I'll take Kevlov, and though well, we're gonna be thrown back into a smaller window again because the um, force scaling. Um, fails us there. And here you can can see some gameplay. I'll just show you how this works. The sound is slightly stuttery, but not too horrible. This is a common problem. Maybe some of the configuration can be adjusted. So I'll just take the first mission. Okay. As I said, you're missing out on the, the original soundtrack at this point. Let's get a weapon here. Oh! Get out of jail free card. Okay. Guess I need to get into that car. Um, there were maps that came with the original, like printed out maps. So we need to get in the other... Let me just pick up a weapon. You can see, you can probably hear now how the sound is stuttering a little. As I said, maybe there's some settings that can be optimized. This taxi here is another mission, if I remember correctly. In the cars, they tend to stop if you bump into them. Okay, let's go in here. I'm not doing much carnage. Oh. Okay. Okay, well, that should be enough to show you a little bit of gameplay here. Um. Gotta actually lower the volume on my end a little. Okay. Okay, so this was number one. Let's exit and look for something else. What do we have here? Let's try Master of Orion 2. I have not tried this one before, so. Um, 
we'll see how that goes. So you see it's a .sh file, it's a Linux version that I downloaded from GOG. Um, reason is that that Linux version generally um, uses DOSBox to run in most cases uh, of GOG games, um, or GOG DOS games. So, and you can just unzip those. generally don't need meta or scripts which is just to help you run the game on Linux so uh, and then no arch game probably arch okay okay you see here's a couple of dustbox uh, con files that GOG uses and a start.sh script let's see it's probably in data and if you look through it, you'll see... Hmm. Orion 95. Let's uh, take a step back and see what's in the scripts here. Here, the auto exec section is the one that I'm interested in. Orion two. Where does it get Orion two? Oh, okay. So it just uh, it's not capitalized. Okay. Okay, it's in folder data. Um, so we can just um, launch DOSBox from here. I would again uh, try to copy the sample file, um, the, the reference. Uh, we'll name it something else. We'll name it mo2.com. Okay. Um, edit mo2.com quickly. Um, you can probably create your own default one for like the preferred values GL um, M size. there's lots of stuff to read up on if you're interested in this um, what else is there something else that we need to adjust uh, uh, CPU type Okay, now we should be good to go. Does box X Okay, and again we mount C here, and now we need to go to data. And then let's let's look into the configuring the sound card. Oh, I forgot to uh, scale. So, this should be more readable now. Okay, and now welcome to the fun of uh, configuring sound cards. Um, I'll try this. I'm not sure if MIDI works. We will see how that goes. Digital audio driver, Sound Blaster 16. Detected successfully. There's no way to test it here. I guess we'll see in the game. Round two. Uh, you might be able to try it actually in Windows 95 or 98. We're not going to do that today. Um, I'm not sure what the advantage is of running that. Okay. Okay. 
It's been a long time that I've played this one. I just let the intro play out a little bit. Um, you can see the sound is stuttering a little. There are some settings that can help sometimes, like the the buffer size, I think, or the. You can look in the sound or mixer settings on the config file. Okay. Okay, I'll skip this. Okay. Um, you see there's two cursors now, but when I press Control F10 or generally click on... It's not, not clicking doesn't work, it's not set to do that here, but you can press Control and F10 to uh, like um, grab the mouse or release it. So let's see what happens when we do a new game. Okay, I will leave everything as it is. Okay. Gee, it's been a long time that I've played this game. I and I don't remember basically anything. Let's let's just play the humans for today. Charismatic. I bet our color will be purple. Let's see what we have here. Zero percent tax rate. I bet the Republicans would approve of that. Okay. Here's the fleet. It's the solar system. Soul 1, Soul 3. That must be Earth, huh? What do you think? Okay. Do we have any leaders? Okay, I really forgot how to play this game, so I'll just like take these and see if I can go to a different solar system. I do not know what the colors stand for, but they do stand for something. Here's some kind of wormhole or something. Okay, you can see your colonies here. Your planets. Okay. Yeah, the game, as far as I remember, is quite complex. And here you have an information system about move ships and stuff, so if you're new to this game, I would probably have to read up on all of this, but I'll just do this. Okay, so I can select the new research. I do not recall what's good here, but shield sounds good. Let's take another turn. I have a colony ship, so I'm not gonna land on a gas planet. This one's Terran. Radiated. It doesn't sound that great. Desert. Toxic. Abundant. <coughs> yes. Okay. So we're building our first colony here. 
So, for those who have been complaining that there's a lack of um, 4X games, 4X space games on OpenBSD, you can run this one nicely in DOSBox. And yeah, this should be enough for now to um, to show this. So I will. I don't even know how I. Oh, here's the game menu. Okay. There's settings and everything, but I'll just click the game for now. Okay. Okay. Let's see if there's something on the stream. Well, we have more, so we're just half an hour into the stream, so what else do we have? I'll just remove um, Master of Orion. Uh, let's leave it here. Okay, so let's uh, go to the next topic. Then. Next topic is uh, Windows. So, as I said, one of the advantages of um, DOSBox X over our DOSBox imports is that you can uh, actually install and run Windows on it relatively reasonably. So, there's this web page here, which has been, which is not oh. online anymore, but you can access it through archive.org, which has details on, on how you can install it. So, um, I've heard different things about Windows 95 versus 98 in this context. So for me personally, Windows 98 works better. It's the interface is more fluent and I've had I've not had a lot of issues with running stuff, but I mean there are some there's stuff that doesn't run, there's stuff that runs but video playback or sound playback doesn't work. So there are a couple of issues but um so far, it seems to me that Windows 98 is the one to go to. I haven't done extensive comparison. So, uh, uh -huh. in that case, what you would do is you find this web page on archive.org, and then you um, need to download a bunch of stuff. Uh, you need to get your own copy of Windows uh, 98 in this example. Um, you don't need those DOSBox builds. You don't need to care about this. You can all do all of this with DOSBox X. Uh, the next step here is, I'll just give you a little bit of a guidance. So you do get a, a boot disk. So, and then you use, let's demonstrate this quickly. Uh, Here's DOSBox X. Uh, so the current working directory should be the home folder. So uh, let's make a, a a volume or a drive. You do this with image make and then uh, test when dot ng and then as shown down here like here's the syntax the, the arguments HD size is in megabyte as far as I remember let's just make it 512 megabyte no FS because you're gonna like install uh, the, the operating system on it and format it um, from the boot disk, so let's see here in the operating system. You see, it now exists here in that folder. So, um, and this is what you may want to write down: the number of cylinders, heads, and sectors. Um, and then you get the boot disk, and then. So this is, I'll, I'll leave that for you to try out if you want to get into this, but 
um, you use image mount to, on the one hand, mount the, the image we just created. You can actually do this um, in DOSBox. So let's just try this. Image mount to uh, test win 98.g size. I think it's always 512 at the beginning and then it's the reverse of those numbers so it should be 63 sectors 32 heads and 520 cylinders hope I'm getting this right and not embarrassing myself <laughs> uh, type HDD FS mine. Okay, this has now been uh, mounted and um, uh, similarly you can mount the boot disk like number two means it's going to be uh, drive C at least as far as I understand the syntax. Um, uh, zero in this case here means that it's going to be the, the floppy drive A. So let's see if we can go to C. Okay, we cannot. But what you can, what you do then later with the floppy drive is you use boot dash L, and then um, you choose. I think. How did I do this? Um, nah, no, I don't have anything here. Um, let's just try. Okay. It, finds that this one is unbootable. Uh, uh, three. Okay. Yeah. So we pass the drive letter. It cannot boot it because there's no file system on it. Uh, and that's why it does this. But you see here, um, if you get the boot disk, you can just boot into the boot disk and then you do the different steps. You, you like, partition the drive and you format it with FAT32 for example um, and then you should be done with that step and then you copy the Windows files into just into this. So the way I do it on OpenBSD um, let me get an example ready This will take a moment. <coughs> this is what we'll use then for the next game demonstration. So there's a couple of ways to getting the game data <coughs> onto the that virtual drive <coughs> that you created. Uh, one of them is you mount that virtual drive in your operating system and in this case OpenBSD and then you just copy the files onto it which is what I use most of the time. Another way is if you have it on an if you have it on an ISO image you can mount an ISO as a CD drive. Uh, let's first look at how to uh, mount the image. So we have the image file here, and the way to do that is use vnconfig, which creates, I think, a virtual node, vnd0 we'll call it, which is going to be a new device, and we'll pass it the, the image file. Now, we have a bunch of devices here. Um, you can find out what you need to actually mount by doing disk label. You find that partition I, unsurprisingly for a DOS drive, uh, is going to be what you need. And then you can dismount 
um, then here in mount you see uh, all the dust data and um, one way to get the game is then to just like rsync or copy into um, like um, let's just take the config file here as an example um, need to do that as root okay and this way we'll see that we have um, yeah Arcanum is not working so we can we can also just delete that so okay so this is how we can work with the files um, then we unmount it again then you remove the node uh, with flag U and then everything should be set. So this is how you work with that. Alternatively, you can, if you have the, the ISO of a CD, the CD itself does not seem to uh, work. It does, or is not, doesn't have a mechanism with DOSBox X. You'll need an an image of the CD to work with it. Um, anyhow, this is how you get the Windows 98 files onto the hard drive here into Win 98 CD is what they have as an example here. And then you, you're in DOSBox, you boot into the boot disk, you go into the folder with the Windows 98 data and then you do setup uh, forward slash nm forward slash is. And it walks you through the setup, and it should just be like you know it from way back when. And then you change it so that you boot into C instead of A. You'll need a product key, and then then the real fun starts that you need to find drivers and software. So. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of steps. Uh, I'm not sure if I did it correctly, like the Gravis ultrasound, for example, I installed, but it's not really working. You'll see that in a moment. Uh, here, I think important files here has an archive of drivers for Windows 98 here. Um, let me pull this up so that I'm sure you see it. Um, so your Sound Blaster, Voodoo, ultrasound, um, a couple of other software bits like 7-zip, really useful if you put something zip uh, there and um, what else, DirectX you can either choose 7 or 9 um, I have DirectX 9 on it uh, but if they say that 7 is a little bit faster and a little bit better maybe I haven't done that much for comparing this because it takes a while to install everything you can install even like Internet Explorer 6 also, I'm not sure you'd really want to access the internet from this. Who knows? Like with Windows 98 and Internet Explorer 6, you're basically a, like if you use internet access, you're basically a, you have a big target on your back if you do that. Okay. So let's see how this all plays out with Fallout 2, which I have prepared. Um, um, in this image so um, we have the configuration file here which um, let's take a quick look at what it does so it's the long dustbox configuration file and the important part is here at the bottom you see it mounts the image automatically with those parameters it's a I think a four gigabyte virtual drive um, it leaves the file system essentially to like it, it doesn't impose a file system by using file system none I'm not sure how important that is then it boots into C uh, okay so and the way to run it then is simply assuming you've installed everything for Windows 98 um, 
this. And then you see <coughs> booting into Windows 98. And this is interesting because, at least in theory, it in allows running a lot more games from the 90s that were that do not have a DOS version. Um, as I said, XP is not supported yet, as far as I know. I think people have tried it, but that would be the next big step. I'm um, not sure if that's ever going to happen though, uh, but yeah, you see here the ultrasound um, throws some error, but we can ignore that. No, it always stutters a little, the Windows 98 startup sound. I think it's because it does some disk I.O. with the virtual disk. Um, so far, sound has never been 100% perfect, but at least for me, close enough to uh, be reasonably comfortable. So I, how I installed it here is I simply copied the Fallout 2 files from a CD that I bought into a folder in, let's take a look. Um, I'll quickly uh, make this a little larger. Uh, doesn't let me. Oh well. It's a little tiny. Sometimes it it doesn't choose the correct resolution, um, and it's fixed when you start DOSBox again. Let's just try this because the resolution is actually. You can see that the fonts are a little um, not not very sharp, and that's because the resolution doesn't isn't entirely where it should be. Let's just try this again. This happens occasionally and then it's fixed the next time you run it. It should be larger than this. I think I've set the resolution to 800 by 600. Um, yeah, this this is what I was looking for. Okay, you can see the font is sharper. Um, this here is, I think that's new. Uh, the the original DOS box in our port three doesn't have that, but here you can change some settings on the fly. Um, take a screenshot. Uh, yeah, and this here captures the mouse. Okay, you can see it looks better now. I'm not sure why it sometimes happens, sometimes not. It's a bug, clearly, and um, it's only sometimes, like one out of ten, maybe. So what I did is I mounted the drive um, with vnconfig and then created this folder here, fo2cd. Here you see the file that we copied over earlier. And then here's everything that you need to install, and I just ran setup, and it installed everything. Uh, I'm not sure if in this case a no CD patch was needed. Fortunately, sometimes you may need to dip into that to actually get software to run. Um, I'm not sure about this one though. And you should, if you have the ISO, you should be able to just mount the ISO. I, I will try to get to that uh, after this. So I just installed it. As I said, maybe I had to add the no CD patch. Um, not sure right now. And here you have Fallout 2. We'll see how that looks. And I'm gonna register later. Yeah, let's forfeit all the special offers. They're not valid anymore anyway. I will see if we can force scale this. It 
takes a moment. Um, I think it may have just stopped at some point. I hope we're not going to run into this today. Generally, um, when the window is focused, uh, key combinations like Alt and F4 or Control, Alt and Delete should work, should be sent to Windows and uh, then you should be able to like manage your, your processes that way. I hope it's not going to let us down. <laughs> I think it took a while, so let's give it a, uh, another minute or two. I think that is not cooperating today. Let's see if we can get. Oh! Uh, I guess hitting Alt and F4. No, Alt and Tab. Tab. Okay, here we go. I'm sorry that this was a little bumpy. We'll have to watch a little bit of the intro, it's just, it's follow too, like the intro is just so important. It's important because it sets the whole tone for the game. Okay, we're not going to let the whole video play, um, but, yeah, um, you can see the intro playing here. Oh, and here's the second part. Yeah, and that one is... I tried to get it to run with Fallout 2. Um, oh, I have not tried this one because there is um, the Fallout uh, 2, I think, restoration mod, which fixes a bunch of bugs and adds some stuff and is generally considered to be the best way to play it these days. It uses S Fall, and I'm not sure if that can work with Windows 98, but. Um, Yeah, sometimes it um, gets a little, um, when it transitions between screens, it slows down a little. But let's just make a new game. And of course we'll create a character because this is Fallout 2. So the transitions between screens are the main thing that's a little slow. Let's be accurate here. And then, I don't know, let's 
my strength is uh, my perception, my wear glasses is uh, my endurance is not really great. Intelligence, of course. My agility is not is, is pretty bad, but I tend to be very lucky. Let's say luck ten, intelligence seven. What else do we have? I'm have to distribute. Uh, maybe this. Maybe my perception with glasses is okay. Where do we put the other one? Mm, maybe strength is not that poor. Okay. And so what we have here: science, doctor, and let's do this just for the beginning of the game. Okay. So we have created a character, and let's hop into the game. So here's another video, but we'll skip this one and jump right into the, the, the initial trial. Here we are. So after the transition, it's maybe a little slow, but you can see here we are. We can punch. Hmm? Oh, I'm just realizing that the the sound effects don't work here. I am not sure why. Um, I'm not sure why. I forgot about that. This is one thing that does not work here, and it would be great to find out what's going wrong there. Okay, anyhow, we can. The game's still playable even if we don't hear the sound. I think with shift we can run. Fallout 1, by the way, um, the DOS version works, and it works with sound, and it runs pretty smooth, so that one's definitely playable. Uh, this one here, I guess the lack of sound effects is a little bit of a bummer. Oh, I just see that there's some advice to to kill the person there on the outside. I've never tried that before, so um, let's just fight some of these ants first, and then we'll see. I'm not gonna like play seriously, so I might take some damage. One hit point. Come on, we can do better than this. Three hit points. Okay, that's a little better. Let me see if I can kill that guy. I'll probably get killed by him. Let's first talk with him.
Can't I have him? Start the fight. Well, I guess so. Let's first get close and personal here. One hit point. Come on. His guts are on fire. Oh my god, he's gonna kill me so bad. He got he can hit me four times? What's wrong? Okay. Well if I die then leave it at that. Eight hit points. Yeah, but I, I, I know I have a spear. It's just that I picked unarmed. I don't care right now. It's just if he kills me, so be it. Then I'm still alive. Barely. Okay, that's it. Okay. Um, yeah, but you see, this can run too bad about the sound. But that's been a recurring theme. Like, I've tried Interstate 76, which just produces some weird beeping sound. Um, Similar with, uh, I think, um, incubation. So something with the sound and windows is not working as it should. Um, let me move this a little. I'm not sure why it's so large now. Um, but yeah. Um, maybe this is something that DOSBox X might fix at some point. So it doesn't necessarily automatically but we can just do control and F9. Okay, let's take a look at one more. Um, and that would be MDK. And this one I haven't tried before. I'm curious how this is gonna go. This is the DOS download, as you can see, which I'm not sure why I downloaded that one, but um, <coughs> if you wanna extract it, you need, you know, extract. And, um, We'll need to make sure that this is actually the DOSBox version. It's probably MDK soft. Exe. That we'll need. Here they use nGlide to have it run with acceleration in Windows, which I think is a Windows specific thing. Okay, um, let's see how this goes. Um, I will use a, a DOSBox config that I already have for a different game for Archimedean Dynasty. That's also a 3D game. Um, and now I'll mount uh, dot dot. So if we go here, we need to go to app folder. Oh, 
Okay, let's try mdk dot. Let's also mdk soft. Oh. Okay, maybe I'll need to download the. See if there's a, Win a Linux version that may have DOSBox files. It may be that these executables have been patched to run with Windows NT or XP after. Okay, let's take a quick look. version. Let's see what's in there. It's going to take a moment to download. I think 7-zip can open those DMG files. We'll see. If we don't get anywhere, we'll just stop there. Uh -huh. Here's a DOS toolkit. There's DOS 4GB. Uh, it might work. Um, let's see what happens. Never tried this. We might have to find a way to mount this as a CD-ROM. Um, this is a little bit experimenting for me. Um, make we'll make it our hard drive otherwise um, size should be 1024 should be enough Okay. Um. Okay. 
Let's see what this looks like from here. I'm not sure if that's gonna mess it up for us, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Let's take the reference file. Put it here as mdk.conf. We'll do that in DOS. Um, I may need to experiment a little bit with that. Okay. Okay, I'm not sure if I'll get anywhere. This is a little bit the um, trickiness with how this all image around. Um, I'll just take a quick look to get an idea. Here you can mount with 
a letter. However, I'm not sure if we can actually do that. Oh. Just take a quick look if I can get this set up. There may be a way to do this with a, a boot disk. Which is getting too complicated at this point, so let's leave it. Um, I might post later if this if I was able to work that out. Uh, but I can show you one more, like System Shock. Let's see if there's any. Uh, Heroes of Might and Magic 3, by the way, um, runs too slow. It does run, but it's really slow. So, um, I think we can run it from here. So let's see. Yeah, okay. So here we go to S shock. And by the way, this is the version. I don't think it's from GOG. I think it's from Humble. Humble Bundle. Um, so they recently updated that one. Not sure if it still works. I would assume. In the ideal world, it should, and they should not like change things significantly without announcing it or without leaving access to um, to uh, the the older version. But so, unfortunately, sometimes too. So um, let's try this. So 
so this is a DOS game again, not a Windows game, so... Um, so sound is there, and you can play the intro. New Atlanta, Sector 11, Building 71G. Okay. 7 April, Yeah, I mean, it's just a video, so... Just so you see that you can watch all of this nicely, and then here you start a new game. I'm not really very experienced in this game, so um, you don't have a mouse look here by default, so. I'm also not sure how you look up or down. This is how I collect some things. You can run this full screen, by the way. Um, for this sometimes messes up um, the stream, so this is why I'm uh, not really eager to do it. But you can toggle full screen here. Also, I'm not sure what F12 plus F means, because that doesn't work that way. Um, here we just pick up a bunch of stuff. So the reason why System Shock is kind of exciting is that we don't have a lot of... Um, Immersive Sims on OpenBSD, so this is one of them. I'm just taking everything and hear all the beeping. What's this? Okay. Oh well. I can punch you. Now I can use the surgery machine to heal myself. You can see it runs pretty well. Another robot. Come here, robot. I'll turn you into little pieces. Okay. Okay. And here you have the menu. You see the mouse works, it's just not set up for mouse look. I've been steering just with um, uh, with uh, the keyboard. I had another idea. Let's return quickly and take a quick look at MDK again. Framework has so much stuff. Okay, let's start it from here. Uh, 
I'm just gonna peek here what the folder names actually are. You see there's a lot of output from Dustbox. Um, So here we have stuff in D. What does it look like here? Let's see what happens when we run it from here. No CD drive found. Uh, not sure if we'll be able to fix that, but let's. Edit mdk.cmg. What? I didn't like that, huh? I haven't had this problem with edit so far. But let's see. Should be in, looking in D. when I do set up nothing install trying to install it now manually. These are the kinds of things that you may have to um, find workarounds to with uh, running games in DOSBox. It's a little more hassle than if there's a source port of sorts or some, something like ScumVM that kind of replaces the engine and doesn't rely on, doesn't have a copy protection and some of those games are actually like you can't really run them from CD because of copy protection. Okay. Let's see if this gets us anywhere. Okay, it doesn't really accept it as CD drive. Um I think Mom can do something that it pretends to be a CD room. We'll try this. So we need to un. Oh, yeah, it's.
Or what's the file name again? Okay, and now let's try this again. Okay, well, it was worth a try. Maybe I can figure it out uh, some other time. Um, okay, well, thanks for watching. I hope this helps you see, like, see understand how you can work with DOSBox X to uh, get some of the the old games working again. Unfortunately, like especially in regards to the Windows 98 games, a lot of the stuff on GOG um, <coughs> Windows 98 games has been patched to run Windows 7 or Windows 10. It doesn't really like accept um, like an operating system like Windows 98 anymore. Uh, I've got to at least launch is Alpha Centauri, but it has some bug commandos runs, but not the G version. Uh, and I have System Shock 2 waiting to be tested. Fallout is actually, yeah. There's like this the original CD can run in MS DOS. Fallout 2 we looked at is also the CD, it's not the GOG version. Uh, yeah, that's it so far. Okay, well, thanks for watching.